In this video, we're going to show you how to replace a high pressure fuel pump on your Chevy Silverado. This will be located under the intake manifold. Let's get started. Before we get started on our job, we're going to have to bleed the fuel pressure from the high pressure fuel pump. To do this, we're going to remove the fuse box cover, push on these two tabs in the front, open the cover. To bleed the fuel pressure, we're going to start our engine and then we're going to pull the fuel pump fuse and then we're going to let the engine run until it dies out and starves itself of fuel. So go ahead and start the vehicle, come to the fuse box, on your panel you'll find a diagram for the fuse box. In our case this is our fuel pump fuse, so we'll start the engine, pull the fuse and let the car die out. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the negative terminal on the battery. Pull the cable off of the terminal. Put it somewhere where it won't make contact. We're going to remove the PCV hoses from the valve covers. Using an 8 millimeter socket, loosen the clamp. We're going to open up the safety lock on our MAF sensor connector, press on the button on the top, pull straight back, pull that out of the way. We have one more clamp going to the air box that will loosen. And now we can remove the intake. We're going to start to go around removing the harnesses from our intake. We're going to start at the throttle body, opening up that red connector, pulling it off. We're going to remove the alternator plug, tab on the back, push on that, pull straight up. Using a trim tool, we're going to go around popping these clips. And there's one more all the way in the back. Pull this off to the side. We're going to continue on to the other side. I'm going to open this lock. Open that blue tab. Then we can push on our button and remove it. We're going to remove this vacuum hose. Push on this gray button and pull straight back and remove that hose, pull it out of the way. Travel down the side of the cover, removing all of the plastic stays. Now we're gonna have four more of these clips on the back of the intake that connect the harness to this plastic cover. That's one right on the corner, right here. There is a safety clip on the back of this clip for the purge valve. We're gonna open that. Push on the tab. And remove the connector. There's that safety clip. Open that, push down on it, release it. We have one more down, hidden under here. We're gonna push on this tab right here and pull that back and remove that hose. I'm gonna pull that hose up like this. And it'll come as a nice package when we pull this intake. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna go around and remove all of the bolts for the intake. There's two in the front. And then we're gonna work through these holes as we go around removing all of the bolts.
We have two more in the back that we need to get to. I swapped from a long extension with a 10 to a slightly shorter one with a deep 10. Be careful when working around this heater hose. This is just a plastic connection. Depending on how old it is, they can be very brittle and easy to break. We have one more bolt all the way in the back. Now when we pull up on our intake, we can see that the whole thing floats. We're gonna pull it up slightly, pull it forward, and this is gonna give us better access to those clips in the back. I'm gonna use a vacuum and vacuum up any debris that's sitting in this valley. We're gonna go around and plug all of our ports. We're gonna use rags. We're just gonna shove them down inside. This will prevent anything from getting in there or me dropping anything in it. Once we have all our ports plugged up, we can go ahead and remove our foam cover. You can see all that dust on the top, that's why we covered those ports. Remove that foam cover. Using a blow gun, we're going to blow out all of the dust and debris out of this valley. In the back of the valley here, we have our high pressure fuel pump. We're gonna remove the connector for it. There's a tab on the back right there. Push on that. You may have to push the connector slightly in and remove it. We're gonna disconnect the connector in the back right. We're gonna open that red tab. Push on the connector. Open that red tab. Push on the push button right here and pull the connector back. right in front of it. We're gonna pull this off of that bracket. Now we have access to our fuel pump. Remove the spark plug wire for cylinder number one. And put that over to the side. And we're gonna remove the spark plug using a 16 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove the spark plug Remove the spark plug, remove the oil fill cap. We're gonna pull the plastic valve cover back just enough that we have access to the 10 millimeter bolt for the fuel line. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolt for the fuel line bracket.
remove the bolt. We're going to remove the low side fuel line. Pick up on that clip and remove it. It links into the line and then clips on. We have our fuel tool. We're going to push on this and pull the line back. We're going to put a rag over it. And open the lock for that line using the tool and pull the low side fuel line off. We're going to remove the high side crush line. We're going to put a rag under it. We're going to use a 17 millimeter wrench. I'm going to put my rag all the way over the fitting. And we're just going to crack this free. These lines are a one-time use. This ball right here gets crushed when you tighten it down. We'll go to the back now and do the same thing. Remove the fuel line. We're gonna remove the high pressure fuel pump we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket. We're going to remove the bolts on either side. When we do this, we're going to go incrementally on each bolt. Okay, before we install our new high pressure fuel pump, we have to put the cam in the correct position. To do this, we're gonna turn the crank pulley until our number one piston is on the top dead center of the exhaust stroke. To do that, we're gonna use a boroscope and we're gonna look down at the top of the valve. Although we're using a boroscope, it is not required. You can use a flashlight and look into the port to see the valve. Now we're gonna use a half inch bar on the front using a 24 millimeter socket. And we're gonna use a long extension that's going through the spark plug number one hole. And this is gonna help us find where that piston is sitting. And we can see that our valve right now is closed. We're gonna continue turning and my hand is traveling up on my extension. So that means the piston's coming up towards us. And now we're traveling back down with our valve still closed. That means we should have already passed our intake compression and we should be finishing our power stroke as soon as this piston comes back up. And you can see that the extension is traveling up and when we hit the top of this, we should be on top dead center of the exhaust stroke. And right there you can see the valve move very slightly and that'll be the overlap. And that means we're gonna be on top dead center of the exhaust stroke. Another method is using a specialty tool. This is just a plug that sits on top of the cam follower that will sit flush when at top dead center. Using a clean rag with some parts cleaner, we're gonna wipe down the mating surface for the high pressure fuel pump, get it nice and clean. We have our cam in the correct position and now we can install our high pressure fuel pump.
get the bolts lined up. Be sure that big black bracket is sitting under the fuel rails. If not, the bolts like to start going sideways. And same thing when we remove this, we're gonna snug these down incrementally side to side. We want it to snug down nice and square to make sure we don't damage anything. We're gonna get both these bolts finger tight. Get the bolts nice and snug. We're gonna to torque these fuel pump bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Install the connector, push and see here a click, give it a pull, make sure it's locked on. We're gonna remove our cap for the low side, and we're gonna install our fuel line push it into place, you'll feel it click on. You can give it a pull, it won't be able to come off. Now we're gonna install our lock. I'm gonna hook this inside of the line, pull it back down and around, and click it on on the bottom. We're gonna grab our new fuel line. We're gonna get this installed. We'll start in the back. We're going to get this loose, don't tighten it down yet. Get this front one installed. Snug both of these down by hand. Grab our 17 millimeter wrench. We're going to snug these down. The torque spec on these is 22 foot-pounds. I don't have a crow's foot or a line attachment, so we're using a wrench. We're gonna go back in the back here. We're gonna install our connector back onto that bracket. There's a little tab on the side of this that you can pick up on and then pull this off. And we'll slide it back in and then get it back around that bracket. Install the connector back onto that bracket. Pull our connector out from behind that harness. Get it reinstalled. Push and T here at click. Close that red locking tab in the back. I'm going to give it a push, make sure it's locked on. We're going to go through and use a clean rag to clean all of our intake ports. Go around wiping away any of the oil or dirt. Go around and do this for all eight ports. Install the 10 millimeter bolt for the fuel pipe. Get it nice and snug. We're gonna go and remove all of the rags. We're going to replace the intake gaskets on our intake manifold. I recommend doing this whenever you take the intake manifold off. We're going to go down and wipe all of our ports with a clean rag. Do this on both sides.
install the intake gaskets. Install the foam insulator. I'm going to go through and snug all of them down. On our first pass on our intake manifold, we're gonna to torque it to 41 inch pounds. Follow along as we go. We're gonna go on a zigzag motion. The middle bolt on the passenger side being one. Two. Three. four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way in the back left. Nine in the back right. And 10 in the front passenger. We're gonna go around one more time to 88 inch pounds and this will be our final torque. Starting back on one.
We're going to start going around reattaching all of the plastic stays for our harnesses. We're going to start all the way in the back. That's the one on the back passenger side. Go through and reattach all of the connections. On this vacuum hose, you'll have to push on this tab to reinstall it. It wouldn't just slip over. Install the connector for the purge valve. Close the tab in the back. We installed all of our plastic stays down the side. We installed the connector for the alternator, the throttle body, our vacuum hose here, the connector for the purge valve, the vacuum hose going to the front. Pull this plastic valve cover back into place. Install the oil cap. Install the air intake. Snug down the clamp. Do the same thing on the airbox side. Install the PCV hoses. We're going to reinstall our fuel pump fuse. the 20 amp right there. Install the cover for the fuse box. And pull these tabs back in. Install the MAF sensor connector. Push until you hear a click. Close the lock. Make sure it's locked on. We're gonna install our spark plug. Snug it down. Torque the spark plug to 11 foot pounds. Install the wire. Push until you hear a click. Be able to pull and it won't want to come off. Install the negative battery cable. Snug the terminal down. Give it a wiggle, make sure it doesn't move, and you're good to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.